for centuries humans have taken to the ocean. We have been drawn to it to survive. This is a story about men who pull their income from the sea. In an industry struggling with both human and environmental pressures, the life of a chaka fisherman is not for the faint-hearted. Every trip is a gamble. Get it right and you go home with thousands of rands. But get it wrong and it could be disastrous for the men on board. Abel Goliath has been a fisherman since he was a young man in the Western Cape. He now lives in Addo in the Eastern Cape and fishes on the Chaka vessel, the Jamie J. He is proud and passionate about his job. I work now for uh, 33 years on the sea. And what I'm doing, I'm catching fish, Chaka with line, with the end lines, and. Uh, I'm the, I, 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 I'm the driver, I see that the engine is working normally. Yeah, the fishing industry, industry is also main income. Uh, so this is basically only me who's on the sea and the others, is my son is working. But uh, he's working seasonal, seasonally, the same like me, but they not a good income, but mine is the, is the main income. From the sea. This is my oldest sea in Donovan. Okay. And this is my fro, uh, Geraldine. Scott. Hello. 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 <laughs> and that is my doctor, uh, Jocelyn. Hello. And that is my sea in Owen. And that is uh, my baby, uh, Hello! <laughs> this is Zwede Township, home of Vakele James Maxwell. James is the oldest man on the Jamie J. At the age of 72, he still works for weeks at a time bringing in fish to support his sister, sons, and younger brother. Well, I work at sea. You know, I work very hard, you know, battling because I'm old, but what can I do? Because this money I get from Sasa, this is not the money, you know? 1,600 is just for food, you know? Now, it's very heavy, like now, because we had three months living, like so I can say the government said we must not fish in, give a fish chance to grow up and all that things he was battling. He used to go to the boat every day or make some jobs for a living. For decades there has been a mandatory one month off season. But in 2014 representatives of the industry agreed to extend the off season by an additional two months which was later extended by another month. These restrictions allowed squid populations to grow. However, for these four months Many fishermen are left with no other source of income. Take a look. Very nice. <laughs> the boat is now almost ready to depart. Before they go, the crew have to make sure that everything on board is ready for up to three weeks at sea. The engine must be in tip-top shape and there must be enough food to feed all 16 men. Jamie J, just hope we have a good year, eh? Cheers, man. Before the men go out to sea, they traditionally get together to celebrate the opening of the fishing season. 
and you go to sea with a promise and you come home with a promise, you know, that's the day you're docking, you know you earn nothing. That embarrassment that you gotta go home with, you know, it, it, it's in the back of your head. It, it's plain, simple. There's no chicken you know, in the pot. No. Yeah. Yes, sir. No, that makes me happy. Yeah, Benny Maynard has been the skipper of the Jamie J for 17 years. He has loved fishing all his life and used to skip school to go fishing. It seems he was always destined for a life at sea. Battling against the odds and the elements, he has a huge responsibility. It is his duty to find the squid for the men to catch. And I'm the first fun for some um, 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 first of fun. <laughs> oh, well, we're leaving port now. First day of the new season. We're hopefully gonna get something, but we've um, got a lot of stuff still to sort out. It's the start of the winter fishing season in Port Elizabeth. At 12 o'clock, Dozens of fishing vessels race to find the best catch. The men on board don't get straight wages. They catch on commission. The bigger the catch, the bigger the paycheck. This means that there is competition between the crew members. Every man wants to catch more than the man next to him. Uh, my name is Joseph, uh, fisherman. I'm the best fisherman, but even though I'm the best fisherman, uh, there's someone I fear. It's going along, but going is the fastest. But if the material of God, I always chase him, chase him, chase him, going is a lot of trouble, and I hope to beat him this way. <laughs> In your dreams. <laughs> The crew spend a lot of time in their sleeping quarters in the forecastle of the boat, where they chat about their expectations for the trip. Mm. What's going on? Where's, where's the truck, eh? Why is it taking so long? Coming. Is it coming? Later. Later. Yeah. Are you excited? Yeah. You're gonna catch lots of chocolate? Uh, I'm straight. Yeah, he's in history, so. Well, I'm gonna feel crafted green. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna feel some more, brother. Yeah, I'm gonna feel some more. Lonwabo Gogela is both a fisherman and the boat's cook. He's an aspiring skipper and he bunks in the stern with Arbel. And I'm cooking. Yeah. I'm special. Not on the menu. <laughs> See? What is this? This stuff? When I fry uh, onion with uh, tomatoes. That plant we call bisto. Bisto, you know bisto? Yeah, we just get fish of this paper. I don't know what the fuck is this. Light meat, shredded, tuna in salt water. That's it. The first night of the trip only brings in 52 kilos of chaka, a meager 650 rand of pay. A good trip means that the Jamie J will bring in between 10 and 17 tons with the fishermen often filling more than a 40 kilogram crate a day. Well, today is one of those days where you just look around from early morning, look everywhere, try a couple of things, try places, and I think it's just a quiet day in general. You don't find anything to fish with. The morale of the crew just starts going down. And then on top of it all, as you're about to get into the right type of area, you get thousand dolphins to come and chase everything away for you and especially when the crew that's it's heartbreak it does get heartbreak but luckily we know it can change 
very quickly and next thing we know we're catching a lot of fish so we will always be positive Scientists aren't exactly sure why the chokka became scarcer in the area. They suspect that alongside overfishing, climate change is a factor. But it could also be down to a natural perturbation. Whatever it is, it is definitely affecting the fishermen's lives. We were supposed to lock this stuff long time ago. You happy with that one, James? Uh, you happy with that one? Yeah, so far. Yet, you can even make it to us on a recruitment. Ali are a hundred so. I take care of it. Talk us cars as my essay in your heart. I've got net for the end of any trip. I must confess it. I'll see a date and run to us even. Takes years of experience. We do a lot of phoning around and looking around for fish. We spend quite a bit of time hunting for fish. Most of my time is spent behind the wheel, looking, driving around, looking for fish. Benny is now under immense pressure. He has no choice but to move on and makes his way to Jeffrey's Bay. He can only hope that this is the right move as the fate of the trip lies in his hands.
Benny gets a tip off from a friendly skipper about a good amount of chocker in Plettenberg Bay. Things have eased off a bit in Jeffries. He goes with his gut and sets course for Plett. Just to encounter yet another agonizing setback. The crew is now stressing about whether or not they will be squid when they arrive in Plett. The Jamie J arrives in Plett to find very little chocker, just a lot of seals. But now it's all going to go away. It's a sagil, but it's happy. But it's a sagil. But it's a sagil. It's a sagil. Maybe nobody has a little bit of a sagil. Look, when we're starting, I it was very, very terrible, you know, because the fish, the fish was scarce, man. We couldn't, we couldn't catch nothing, nothing, nothing. When I came out of the air yeah, and all that thing. And we was worried because the guys want to see how we work at sea, you know that. It's about two days after we're going and then we start, we start catching. Everybody dancing, it's just quiet here, nobody talks. And everyone just, you know, we go for it. <laughs> yeah, we go for it, yeah! We talk a little bit better now, better than before. So, yeah. we hope that it will be more because we want to pull out the boat. The Jamie J has to go to port and offload their catch while it's still fresh. Unfortunately, the rest of the trip didn't go as well as the men had hoped. At the end of the day, 19 days on board a cramped fishing boat is tough. In total, they brought in just over 5 tons. This amounts to 62,500 Rand, an average of 4,200 Rand per man. But the men haven't all caught equal amounts. On a good trip, the men can make more than double this amount. During the second half of the trip, news of a chocker boat sinking off the coast of St. Francis reaches the crew. And this was not easy for the men to hear. Hey, we've been missing home, mate. Our families. They've been waiting for us to come back and then everything on, on sea is happening. Bad weather, other boats have sink, so they are worried about us, whether it's us or not. But anyway, we're here to make money, make growth for our family. So now we are going home, we're feeling super, super, super happy. Yeah, see a poor man, I'm trying to say, but you see my car, but yeah, see how he being I'm just because the chalk, ah, see if man anga go close, see if man anga ayo, galo. Each man gets paid about twelve rand fifty for each kilogram of squid they catch. A full crate of squid can hold about forty kilograms. This means that a full crate can earn a man five hundred rand. The competition between Quayla and Joseph was intense, but it has come to an end, for this trip at least. Joseph, you beat me. You must always bring this camera so that he can beat me again. <laughs> he beat me, he won me this time. But he was lucky, huh? he was lucky. It's kind of complaint when he trapped me. Trump was alright for this. So... I can't say, trap is clear and that's I used to want to eat. But I need to eat very ice, come here after a week, take beer, but I can. It's going to be better. Open my boat, Paul, tomorrow. 
A new small-scale fishing policy might be implemented by the government next year. This means that artisanal and subsistence fishermen will be granted fishing rights along the coast. The commercial fishermen aren't happy about this. It is a gamble whether or not this policy will succeed. A gamble that comes at the cost of their livelihoods. It means that they will have to take an extra two months off. So essentially, the men will be out of work for half the year. There are many other factors that play a role in the amount of money that these men make. The bad weather, dolphins, seals and engine trouble didn't do them any justice. This is the life of these fishermen who now get to spend a week ashore before going out again to pull money from the sea.